who he is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I'd, I'd be cautious with it. And I don't know how much money is supposedly being thrown around or not. And I don't want to – as much as I do want to see him regularly, I don't want to see him at the same time because the same he's going to – it's he's gonna get lost. I don't want to see him get lost. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. All right. Finally, and we have to touch on it because it's a huge story, uh, and we'll spend the, probably all of thirty seconds on this. Uh, Jimmy Snuka passed away. Uh, I will lay out my entire thoughts now. Uh, there is no doubt the influence he had on the business and on the future of many. Many, many careers in this business, including Mick Foley. Uh, that being said, um, he probably was a complete scumbag. Uh, we, uh, he was never tried. He was never convicted. So, it's, you know, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I'm very sorry for Tamina. I'm very sorry for his family. I'm sorry for The Rock for their loss, for all of the people in the business that considered him a friend. Uh I think the WWE should have had the title card at the beginning of the show, and that should have been it. I I agree with that in, mostly, and I understand why they did what they did because I mean, it's it, it's all political, and you're risking on one side, you know, offending the people who do know what's going on and you know by by putting more stuff out there you're offending let's say the you know the the people like you and me that at least are pretty sure that he killed his girlfriend not that we know for sure cuz right. neither one of us were there but it it seems pretty sure that he did but at the same time Business is business, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and you're risking potentially offending um, three people who are currently – at least three people that actively work for the company. I mean to me and I don't – technically is employed by the company. I don't know when the hell she's coming back. But I mean you've got the Usos. And now – and and to to be clear, there are people that are actually related to Jimmy Snuka, like Tamina, and there are people that are like Bond related right. to Jimmy Snuka, like the Usos, like The Rock, things like that. But you run the risk of somebody like The Rock that you, Vince doesn't want to piss off The Rock. The Rock is his door to the mainstream yes. everywhere. And I think he's going to take that bullet to turn around and go, well, if I piss off a few rights groups or whatever, or, you know, a few hardcore fans that actually know what he did, the, the average Joe fan remembers like either they're too young to even know who the hell Jimmy Snuka is, or if they remember him, they, they recall him fondly. They, they realize, Oh yeah, the Superfly, I remember him. He, yeah, like guys my age and older, like you go name three wrestlers and one of them ends up being Superfly Jimmy Snuka mm -hmm. just because he was that iconic back then just for, you know, between again, Mick Foley will reference that dive off the top of the cage on Morocco. Morocco won that match. That was after yep. the match. But that that dive off the cage, which was completely insane at the time, um, the getting smacked in the head with a coconut in a Piper's pit, I, I mean, that was one of my earliest memories of wrestling was I have two memories of Snuka both getting his head split open. One was the Piper attack, and one was a couple of years later after Snuka left and went to the AWA, where he had this feud with Colonel De Beers. And Colonel De Beers was like this this gimmick kind of beyond its. Because I do you do you have any knowledge of Colonel De Beers? I and, do not. Okay. Colonel De Beers was this guy. He was a former uh, wrestler from uh, the Portland area, uh, Portland, Washington. 
and uh, was brought in by Playboy Buddy Rose uh, because that's uh, Buddy Rose was pretty big, no pun intended, in the AWA at the time. And he brought in this guy. And the Beers played a South African pro-apartheid racist. Or he came out in his fatigues and his beret. He had an excellent mustache sideburn combo look him up later but he was just kind i mean he would cut these promos and he had this feud with snooka at that he refused to wrestle snooka because snooka wasn't the right skin color and people went nuts i mean it was hot as hell and he ended up attacking Snooka, and uh, his finisher was like a face first um, pile driver. And he did it to Snooka on the floor of the showboat in uh, Las Vegas, where they taped all like months and months of uh, ESPN shows. So he did this face first pile driver, and he split him up. And they spent like half the show. They had the gurney out, they stabilized his neck. There was like no talking. It was like panic mode, with the, and it just stuck with me. It's like oh, this guy's an asshole, <laughs> and it it was probably the most over anybody was at the AWA at that time because it was a shit show otherwise. <laughs> All right. So, well, on that thrilling, wonderful note, <laughs> Tom talks about old AWA all next week. <laughs> <laughs> all right. AW knew how to make people bleed. So, that uh, match and the Midnight Rockers match with uh, Doug uh, Doug Summers and Playboy Buddy Rose. So much blood in that match. But anyway, so on, on, on ESPN at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. So get home from school and watch Massively Bloody Wrestlers. So, Sorry, I'll let you talk. <laughs> You're good. Uh, so I thought of a bit earlier that I think we're going to have to go with. Oh, okay. When you were talking about ECW. And watching it all the time, Tom. I, I am not of the age where I saw much ECW hardcore TV, especially here in North Carolina. So, Tom, I think we we have to watch an episode a week, starting from the beginning. The, the beginning, beginning, because oh, it's bad in the beginning. Starting from the whatever, wherever the network starts. Oh um, God. And we go from there. And we 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 review ECW. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Jimmy Snuka, there you go. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I that maybe have to be like a fifteen minute once a week offshoot that <laughs> doesn't make it into the actual show. Yeah, we we, we may do a couple. Of, I mean, because when you get to the early shows, the Eastern Championship Wrestling, you've got. I mean, th- there's some there's some good, and it, it's like a little nugget of good inside a, what was pretty much just imagine the shittiest indie that you ever dealt with. Oh God. I mean, and that that's what it was. ECW was just an indie promotion yeah. that had, you know, just like, you know, hundreds of other, you know, uh, promotions running high schools across the country right now of guys that you used to know that maybe shouldn't be wrestling anymore or, you know, or just doing show by show because they they're living off their reputation. Uh, guys that shouldn't be anywhere near a wrestling ring, but they're tall and you know they're willing to blade. So sure, we'll stick them in there. At, you know, uh, two or three guys that are about 150 pounds and are willing to bump ridiculously, and announcers that are friends with the owner so they get to do commentary and sound really bad in the process those early ecw shows no joey styles um the occasional promo from Heyman, but yeah right, maybe it, we have, maybe we have to find the part where it, like it actually becomes ecw but it's it's like that but then like then you start way. looking through and then you see well there's eddie gilbert i mean oh you can't go wrong with Eddie Gilbert. It's hot stuff, man. All right, all right. We're we're gonna we'll figure out a way to make this work. This is gonna be okay. Thing. I need to learn. Yeah. I need to learn my UC dub. All right, Tom, uh, I will, any any closing thoughts tonight? Concerns? Questions? I I think we've gone incredibly long. 
Nah, we're up. We're 55. 55. Oh, okay. Well, that's not, that's not too bad. Yeah. Somebody, somebody might actually sit through it. Yeah. All right, Tom, tell the people where they can find you on the interwebs. Uh, look for me on Twitter at Mr. Worker eight. Um, don't find me on Facebook cause I never do anything there and I won't friend you anyway. Cause I don't know you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know how to follow that. Uh, I am on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, at JC Bobbitt, B-O-B-B-I-T-T. I'm also on Tinder and Bumbler. Yeah. Come find me. Uh, I'm here. I'm not... I'm not on those things. I don't uh, even know how those things work. <laughs> you can also find Tom and I on uh, this past week's episode of Cheaters Never Win, our sister, older sister podcast. I don't know what we want to call it yet. Our Big Brother podcast. The one that people listen to. Yeah. Uh, it got re- it got real awkward. Uh, also, R.I.P. Derek. Yeah. It, it, probably, it's a shame that probably, he died. We probably should have talked more about Derek's death than Snooka, but who gives a shit? Well, Derek has an opportunity to come back from death, though. I'm pretty sure Jimmy's not. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, too soon? No, no, it's, it'll, no, it's never too soon. No. Um, all right, on that note, uh, we're going to get out of here. Thank you for listening. Uh, this has been another bullshit test episode of Cheaters Never Pin. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.